No, no, I've actually that. heard you're a lot less secretive, actually. That's a lot less secretive. That you're not going to... No, I'm No, I tell you what, I, the, here's the way I, I view the secretive I was hoping you'd be fooled thing. by that question. No, I'm not fooled at all. Okay. Uh, I'm not easily fooled, hopefully. We're going to double down on secrecy on products. Wow. We're going really? to double down. I'm double very serious. Down? I'm very serious. I want to double down on this. However, there's going to be other things that we do that are, we're going to be the most transparent company in the world on. Like and what? Like, um, like when, when social change. Like when uh, uh, supplier responsibility on what we're doing for the environment. We're going to be the most transparent because we think that transparency is so important in these areas and that if we are, other people will copy what we're doing. And in this area, I want people to copy us. What do you There's mean some by other areas I don't want them to yeah, copy. I get it. But this one I do. What do you mean by social change, the first one of those you mentioned? Oh, I mean, I'm thinking about the, uh, all the work we're doing in, in manufacturing with our suppliers. Would you assess that you have been transparent in the past, or how would you assess what's gone on before? In the past, we did an annual report, and that was our method of transparency. And uh, did we do more than others? I think most people would look at that and say yes. Our actions were clearly much more, but our communication was once per year. It was an annual thing. Uh, now, we're putting out monthly reports. We want everyone to know we're, what we're doing, and we hope that people copy. Is that I enough? Hope they Is do. that enough in China? Talk, assess the China situation, because you have many critics. Um, you have many uh, criticisms, not just fictional ones, uh, but you have ones that are very valid criticism of what went on in China. How would you assess what you're changing to what the manufacturing practices there? Why isn't there an Apple uh, factory in China, run by Apple, done by Apple? Well, there's a lot of questions in there, so let, let me try to t take those one by one a little bit. Why don't we do it? We decided over a decade ago uh, that there were things that uh, we could do better than anyone else, and those things we wanted to do ourselves. And then we looked at other things and said, you know, somebody else can do those better than we can or as good as we can, and we shouldn't put our effort into those. Manufacturing was one of those. The operational expertise and the engineering around it uh, and the whole supply chain management stuff is all, Apple is doing all of that. But manufacturing itself, we looked at it and said, you know, we can, somebody else can do this as good as we and can. And is that still true? I think it's just still true. finished saying things I think do change, right? I think it's still true. I think, uh, but in terms of the, the uh, what, how are the factories doing? Uh, w this year, as an example, We've put a ton of effort into uh, taking overtime down. Now this, this sounds, it probably sounds easy to, to people in the audience. This is actually hard because it's complex because some people work, want to work a lot. Some people want to work a whole lot because they want to move and work for a year or two and then move back to their village and bring back as, as much money as they can. We, we've sort of taken a position and said, we're going to bring this down. And we're already up in the, uh, the last month, we were at 95% compliance. We're measuring working hours for 700,000 people. I don't know anybody else doing this. And we're reporting it. And so you could go on our website and see precisely what the work hours are. It's almost like the labor report the US puts out, you know, where it comes out at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. We put it out at the end of every month, or the beginning of the following month on, on what we did the, the month before. And so we're micromanaging that. And I think we're doing it in a way, and we're showing a level of care that I don't think, I don't see in, uh, in other places. And uh, I think it's really important. And so this is an area where I think we're advanced, and I hope people rip us off blindly. So. Uh, it, but let me just pursue yeah. this for a second. There's been a lot of attention just in the last month or so to the revival of manufacturing in the United States. Yeah. Wall Street Journal uh, today had a, had a piece about wages in the United States being you know, relatively attractive for mm -hmm. manufacturers, productivity being high. You used to have factories, and you used to have at least one factory, I can recall, in the US, I think in Colorado somewhere. Do you ever see the possibility 
I mean, you're a huge company. You're, I would say you're certainly the most influential company in tech and maybe the most or one of the most in any industry. Do you, and you're an operations mm -hmm. expert. Yep. Things do change. There is some manufacturing revival in the US. Will there be an Apple product ever made again in the United States? I want there to be. You what? I want there to be. You want there to be. I want there to be. And uh, we've already, this is not well known, or, uh, but the engine for the iPhone and the iPad are built in the US. In Austin? Not just for the US, but for the world. In Austin? Somewhere? In Austin. Yeah. Uh, the glass on your iPhone is made in a plant in Kentucky. Uh, not just for the U.S., but for other markets outside the U.S. as well. And so I think there are things that can be done in the U.S., not just for the U.S. market, but can be exported for the world. Now, people focus, there's a, there's a intense focus on the final assembly because that's the part that uh, most people look at and say, oh, that, you know, it's an iPhone. They don't think about all of the parts underneath that are, are where the significant value of the, of the uh, bill of material is. And so on the assembly piece, could that be done in the US? I hope so one day. Uh, the, the, the truth is the tool and die maker skill in the US began to go down in the late 60s, early 70s. And how many tool and die makers do you know in the US now? We could have, I could call a meeting around the United States and say, would every tool and die maker come to this room tonight? We wouldn't fill the room. In China, you would need several cities to fill with tool and die makers. And so there has to be sort of a fundamental change in the education system, et cetera, to bring back some of this. But there are things that we can do, and, and that's what we're working on doing. The semiconductor industry is fantastic in the United States. You know, we should do more semiconductors in the United States. The, the, the Corning deal with glass in Kentucky, yeah. this, this is fantastic. And so we will do as many of these as we can do, and you can bet that we will use the whole of our influence to do it. Uh, so, so will it ever say on the back of an Apple product, designed in California, assembled in the United States? It may. It may. And, and even though it doesn't say that today, you could put down there, uh, several parts are from the United States. <laughs> of course, we're well, not going to. I can't put anything down there. You can put it down there. <laughs> that could be your signature. A lot of words. There you go. Simplicity. Yeah. I'm sure we'd come up with a, with a better way of saying it. But...